Hello everyone and welcome to uh, a new edition of Art Master Vision for 2011. Uh, here we have a Perry Miniatures um, ACW rioter figure. Really nice, he's uh, picked up a brick there, just about to throw it. I think the pose is quite nice. Um, a lot of movement in it. And uh, I like the way it's uh, all the creases and that are sculpted as well. Some nice detail there. Um, this isn't the only nice figure though uh, from the pack. I think there's two packs of Riders, and I must say I'm quite impressed with all of them. There's even a couple of uh, older gentlemen in top hats um, picking up bricks and uh, generally uh, causing havoc. Um, so we'll start this figure off now. Um, I've backed him up using a, uh, a black spray primer, uh, car car primer that would be. Um, make sure it's a matte one. He's just temporarily glued to some corrugated card, as you see. Um, super glue I use for that. Makes it easy for me to paint. Easy to handle. I'm uh, just going to adjust the focus a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. I've got two lamps today, so you probably see already that the lighting's much better. Um, you can see there's not a lot of shadow cast, so today's vision um, hopefully will go quite well. Um, so I'm going to start off undercoating uh, the flesh. Going to use some uh, Vallejo Panzer Aces Shadows Flesh. And uh, I'll just take this opportunity to wish uh, all of my viewers a Happy New Year and hope you all had a good Christmas as well. Okay, so I've got uh, a army paint brush, uh, War Games, War Gamer Detail, uh, nice triangle shape, quite, quite fat but not too fat, so there's a good grip on it, uh, and it keeps a good point as well. Now I've uh, just added a small amount of water to the paint, just uh, maybe a, a brush full. Uh, just so it's nice, uh, smooth consistency. Not don't want it to be too runny, uh, so it doesn't run into the uh, onto the other areas of the figure. Okay, so that's uh, that's that done. Uh, so now I'm going to pick some colours to do the cloth. Um, I want it to be sort of uh, neutral browns, but I want it to look interesting, um, as interesting as browns can be. Uh, so I've picked a variety of different browns. Um, we're going to start off using uh, a Vallejo Panzer series again, German camo black brown, but this is uh, a model colour, so you'll probably find it in that section. Now, this colour I particularly like because it's a nice dark brown, um, as you can see there, 
uh, it makes actually uh, a good color to use for undercoating various browns because um, because it's so dark uh, the, sh the shadows that are created when you highlight it um, you can go sort of different ways so you can highlight it with more of a red brown um, such as the flesh color there you can end up that's the second highlight or you can go more towards um, an, an umber or perhaps a English uniform which we will do as well uh, so you'll see I'm going to use this to undercoat the trousers and the jacket but both uh, both colours will uh, be highlighted um, differently. Uh, so, because um, these areas are quite large, um, I'm going to switch to a slightly larger brush. And this brush uh, is a little bit worn out, but it will get the job done. This is a, uh, a superstar brush. Um, I think this is Coat de Arms. Yep, there we go. Coat the arms paints. These brushes are quite nice. They're um, quite durable. They last quite a while. Keep a good point. So I've watered the paint down, so um, it's easy to spread around. It's not going to be uh, thick or, or lumpy in any areas. So we're going to keep keep the detail and not put any extra lumps on there that shouldn't really be there Now I find um, when painting uh, civilians, especially uh, ACW civilians, um, tend to go for more uh, muted browns, um, more dull colours really, so it's nice um, to occasionally put in a brighter colour here and there, just to uh, spice things up so they don't look too boring. So I'll use three or four different browns, a couple of greys maybe, black, and then occasionally a figure will have like a red waistcoat or a yellow uh, neckchief, stuff like that. Just small points of colour that kind of draw your eye but aren't too in your face. Um, I think that's a good way to add some uh, interesting points to your models. Um, I'd also recommend, if you're feeling brave enough, to um, perhaps put some uh, uh, some uh, patterns on the cloth. So you might want to put some stripes on the trousers, or uh, maybe some checks on a shirt somewhere or something. Just to add some variety. Uh, so now the jacket and trousers are undercoated, I'll move on to the uh, the waistcoat. Um, so this is where I'm going to add my colour to this model. Um, and I've chosen green, so I'm going to use Vallejo model colour German dark green. Um, as you can see, it's not a um, in-your-face green, so it's not going to end up more like this. I want it to um, lean more towards, say, canvas. So you can see it's much more of a military, um, earthy looking green. Um, so it's not too far removed from the overall look that I'm going for, but it's still going to add some colour. Um, a quick um, point to make about 
um, any of the guests watching that haven't signed up to um, Ustream, uh, if you wish to comment uh, live, uh, this is being recorded, so if you're watching this again, um, this isn't uh, necessarily for you, but if you do want to sign up at any time, um, you can comment live and ask me questions about anything that's going on or anything in general okay so now he's got his little green waistcoat on I can do his shirt uh, so I've recently bought um, some the Andrea white set um, these come in nice uh, Valero bottles again, but you can tell the difference easily. They've got a nice red tip. Uh, these colours generally come in packs of six. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy them individually, but basically they're six colours that are kind of more subtle. So uh, you're not going to get as much contrast. Um, I believe they're really designed for painting the Andrew figures which are mostly larger scale models so um, you don't want so much contrast on larger scale models but here's an example of the colours that you get in the set so you start with this more greyish brownish white here uh, and then you've got a slightly lighter version there but then they start to get a bit creamy so you've got these two which are leaning more towards uh, a buff white um, and then again you've got a slightly different tone but as you can see between these three you wouldn't use these as a triad so generally uh, I mix and match them and use them however I feel they go together well so if I take these two middle ones out um, perhaps you can go those three although that's probably not quite enough contrast between these two so uh, I'm going to take this one away and pop the white on the end so this is more of a practically a pure white and now you can see that they make a good triad um, so that's what I'm going to use for the shirt uh, so this colour actually um, comes with the little half moon symbol on uh, for anyone who wants this for reference Um, now again something to note about these paints is they are very thick so as you can probably see here um, squeezed it out it's fairly stodgy paint it doesn't really spread that well I'm not sure if that you can make that on the camera so I'm definitely going to water that down so I'm going to put a, a good brush full of water on there just give it a mix in and you can see that's a much smoother paint now uh, so that's going to go on a lot nicer now I've only tried two of the Andrea paint sets um, one being the flesh set and one being the white set um, both, uh, both are quite good they are definitely colours that um, you don't really get similar colours in the Vallejo range um, there's definitely some flesh colours from the flesh set that uh, I use that I wouldn't have been able to find in the Vallejo range so definitely interesting and I'll be trying out the probably the black set and the red set next uh, they're quite expensive paints but you know at the end of the day if you're getting something that you haven't used before then and they're good quality so okay so that's his shirt his waistcoat his jacket and trousers undercoated uh, all we've got now to undercoat is his beard uh, and hat and brick that he's holding uh, so we'll go for the brick we're going to give it a nice brick red so we're going to with a whole red this is a Vallejo model colour
this colour is fairly similar to Vallejo Black Red um, although it definitely dries uh, with a tint more um, orangey brown to it Okay, now finally his hat. Um, I think I might leave his hat black actually, uh, give him black shoes as well. Uh, so, but I think I'm going to give him a grey beard. So, we're going to take some dark grey. This is a Vallejo model colour. Okay, so that's that done. Now we can start highlighting. Um, I'm going to take the flesh first. So we're going to use a Panzer Aces Vallejo. This is flesh base. Um, it's kind of a pinky flesh, but um, not quite as pinky as uh, Games Workshop Dwarf Flesh. Uh, so that's kind of why I like it more. Basically what I'm doing here is just uh, painting over the uh, base coat um, but leaving it the base coat showing uh, where I think the uh, shadows belong so you can see in between the fingers here we're leaving the shadows flesh colour there a little bit on top of the hand around the sleeves where the flesh meets the cloth Uh, you probably noticed I'm using a slightly different brush here as well. Uh, this is a, a Red Sable Kalinsky. It's a free zero, but um, I think it's lost some of its hairs, so it's definitely a bit smaller than that now. Uh, probably closer to a five zero. But I like using this for. Uh, things such as highlighting the flesh, uh, it's good for fine detail work.
Okay, so that will do for that. Uh, now I'll do the first highlight on the trousers. Um, so I'm going to give him some burnt umber trousers now. This is a Vallejo model colour burnt umber. This is going to be used for the first highlight. Um, we'll use uh, some English uniform for the second highlight. Add some water to it. Generally, Vallejo paints don't really need much watering down. Um, they're quite a nice consistency, really. So basically, um, I'm painting the highlight on over the raised areas of cloth and down the side of the trousers here there's a very subtly sculpted um, sewing seam so I'm just going to leave a thin thin line of the undercoat down the side there so even where two creases match up you could do a line straight across but if you take the time to leave a very thin line for the seam then uh, that's a nice thing to do, nice little detail to add again down this side I guess you could um, put the seam in afterwards if you had a steady enough hand uh, but the line has to be quite thin also there's another seam down the front of the trousers here So that should about do it for the first time on the trousers. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the jacket. This time I'm going more for the red brown, so we're going to go with uh, Vallejo model colour flat brown.
I wouldn't worry about painting over buttons because um, really when you come to painting the buttons you should uh, use a black paint and put black on top of the buttons before you put any metal work on them just so they stand out more so you can uh, just paint over them all you like really until you get to that stage Okay, so you can probably already see that um, even though I've used the same undercoat for the jacket and the trousers, uh, you've got two very different browns going on there, um, but it still works quite effectively. Um, you know, you can take it in even more directions than the two browns that I've used. So, you know, you could use uh, Vallejo leather belt and beige brown as two highlights and they'll look completely different to the ones I've already done so uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that um, the colour you choose for the undercoat is as important as the highlight colours you choose so you could probably save yourself some time um, do it using the same colour to undercoat more than one area uh, so now I'm going to take uh, some canvas, this is a Pans Races Valero colour, uh, this is going to be for the heart and the waistcoat. Uh, now we're going to take a colour to highlight the shirt. This is uh, Andrea. Well, it's the second light, apparently, number three of the white colour range. switch to a smaller brush for this go back to my Kalinsky okay so now we're going to do the first highlight on the hair uh, and then the highlight on the black. So for the hair, we use dark grey to undercoat. Now we're going to use Vallejo London grey for the first highlight. Sticking with our Kalinsky sable. Uh, we're just going to do lots of thin lines. in the same direction when doing hair I recommend uh, having quite a bit of contrast between each colour that you're highlighting with um, because well basically 
the, the lines are so thin that even if you highlight it twice um, you can't really get away with subtle colours because the hair will just look too flat so you can be a bit more extravagant with the contrast when highlighting hair so for the black we're going to use uh, Vallejo model colour black grey for the first highlight So there's not really very many creases, if any, in in the hat. Um, so kind of the bowl bit on top, we're just going to do flat, and we're going to leave uh, a line between that and the rim of the hat. So we're highlighting straight over black, basically. Uh, and we can put some highlights on top of that just to add a little bit of extra depth and the shoes uh, I think I'll put some nice brown soles on them so I'm going to take uh, some splinter blotches 2 to begin with this is a Panzer Aces Vallejo colour Okay, so um, I guess now we'll do the second highlight on the flesh. Uh, this is going to be with Vallejo Flat Flesh. This is a again a Panzer series uh, model colour Vallejo. So as you can see here, um, not being quite so generous with the highlight, just picking up where I think the light would be bouncing off, um, picking out some of the tendons on the back of the hand as well. Uh, we can go in with a lighter colour to add some extra highlights to the knuckles or something. the tip of the nose and each nostril Okay, so now we'll do the uh, second highlight to the trousers. I'm going to take some Vallejo English uniform. And add some water to it. Uh, 
an extra tip as well if you if you want to add some extra um, uh, extra subtleness um, to your paints when painting if you feel that it's just not quite subtle enough then add more water because it will generally um, thin it out enough so it's more translucent and uh, it will sort of blend more around the edges kind of feather out And also, the more you drag the paint out, um, the further you stretch it, the thinner it's going to get. So, if you want to put more on on the highest area of the uh, piece that you're highlighting, and then drag it further to the edges, then it's going to get thinner and kind of almost blend itself in a way. It'll make the uh, overall look more subtle, so you might have to put an extra layer on. And it takes more time, but it, uh, it does look quite nice. But then, at the same time, there's really nothing wrong with going all out and being quite bold with your contrast in your highlights. Um, sometimes it's nice to just go a bit crazy and not worry so much about higher contrast uh, you know you can be a bit more fast with your highlighting um, kind of just give a different look to your models so you know not every model has to be perfectly blended or photo realistic you know, sometimes it's nice to just have fun with uh, how you want the model to look. Also, it won't take so long, so you probably get more done. Alright, so now I've done that, um, you can see the colour on it, the shiny bit there on his leg, um, that's still wet, so you can see that that's quite a bit lighter than, say, uh, around the back here, so it's definitely, when it dries, it gets slightly duller, um, you'll probably notice that when it's dry, um, that's a thing to remember as well that sometimes when you put a colour on it seems more contrasty but once it dries it will um, become more subtle so for the second highlight on the jacket I'm using Valerio model colour mahogany brown
Now if you notice, um, I'm not putting any of this colour underneath the arms, um, really because the light isn't really going to be getting to that area. So I'm just going to leave it in shadow. Uh, also another idea um, to spice up uh, the way your models look if you've got a bunch of generic brown coated civilians is um, adding a few patches to their clothes so <coughs> for instance you might want to put a uh, checkered patch on the elbow of uh, one of your civilians or something or on the trousers on the knee anywhere you'd expect uh, patches to be really uh, so now uh, I'm just going to take some um, yeah we we'll use some Vallejo middle stone uh, it, it looks brighter than it is but really it's not uh, you'll see when I squeeze it out but we're going to use this quite um, we're not going to put a lot on basically so this is going to be where the light's really catching just the very corners or the highest points so just on the top there a little bit there a little bit there sometimes that's all you need um, especially on a small area of cloth like that uh, you don't really need to go all over and highlight you just need a little bit of light here a little bit of light there uh, so now I'm just gonna add the white tie light this is the Andrea lightest white color uh, this is gonna be for the shirt uh, probably put the eyes in with this as well Uh, one thing I would say about these Andrea paints is they do occasionally get um, blocked up. So you have to, when you open them, make sure you open them quite well. Otherwise you'll struggle to get the paint out sometimes. You kind of have to pierce the top. Um, unlike Valero paints that just come readily uh, usable. So I'm going to do the eyes, and uh, I've got this brush here, very very fine bristles, um, this is probably my smallest brush, uh, this is basically a um, Army Painter War Games detail brush that has been used so much that all the bristles have disappeared. But it's always good to keep brushes like that because they do come in handy for eyes or thin lines on cloth especially if you're doing tartan and stuff so uh, with a normal brush that job would have been much much harder Okay, so we're going to add a highlight to the hair now using Vallejo uh, Light Grey.
again remember to try and keep the contrast up when highlighting hair and beards you want your uh, highlights to stand out and be actually worthwhile taking the time to do the small lines okay so um, quickly we're going to add a highlight to the red brick I'm going to use a colour here called dark red which is kind of a pinky red um, but I think watered down it might be subtle enough to work well with the brick red uh, or the whole red that I use for the brick I don't want it to be too blood red so and I don't want it to be too brown either so I'm going for dark red We really want to just highlight the corners of the bricks and the fine edges. Uh, so now we're going to take uh, some beige brown and highlight the sole of the shoe. and we're going to take some Vallejo dark grey and highlight the black this is going to be quite a subtle highlight uh, we don't want the black to be too bright because it's obviously because it's black so we're keeping the paint quite watery as well so it's uh, thinned at the edges Now to finish him off, I'm going to take some black paint and put some black on the buttons. I'm going to take some Games Workshop Bolt Gun Metal Just dot some silver on there I think that will about do it to finish him off. So there we have one Perry Miniatures ACW Rioter throwing a brick.
Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming along tonight and for everyone who's watching the recording. Um, it's fantastic support to get people viewing. I hope you can watch again uh, next Friday. Uh, meanwhile, um, please uh, visit the website artmasterstudio.co.uk if you have any questions just email me uh, visit the Steve Dean forum and uh, thanks again happy new year and good night